Welcome, Discovery Point Church. Man, we're glad you're joining us again on a beautiful Sunday morning. Hey, uh, I'm so excited for you to hear this message <clears throat> this morning. And uh, Pastor Ron has just this encouraging message called The Ways of the Lord out of Psalms 138. So I, I encourage you, uh, find your Bible, uh, use whatever tool that you use to to uh, read God's word, have that ready this morning. And in fact, just take a moment, get that ready because you're gonna need it. And you're also, you're gonna need just to really be dialed into this message. It's, it's powerful, it's passionate, and, uh, and, and it's one of those life-changing moments when you begin to understand the ways of the Lord. Man, we are so glad you're joining us, uh, even through this platform. So uh, let us know, we can pray with you, pray for you. And so uh, today, we pray that God moves in your heart, that he speaks to you through our time together here uh, on the social media platform. So let me pray for you, and we're going to go into worship. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, this incredible season where we are remembering uh, that we are to be the people of gratitude. God, as we hear this message, the ways of the Lord, let us understand with more depth uh, more meaning, more clarity, what that means in our lives. So, Father, we're going to worship you, and then we're going to hear your word this morning. Encourage your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go into a time of worship. It's a song of the redeemed, rising from the African plain. It's a song of the forgiven, Drowning out the Amazon rain. The song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Love song born of a grateful choir. All God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah. He reigns. He reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory. The dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none reached truer than this. All God's children sing glory, glory, hallelujah. He reigns, he reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory. All the powers of darkness tremble at what they've just heard. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. All the children sing glory, glory, hallelujah. He reigns, he reigns. All God's children sing glory, glory, hallelujah. He reigns, he reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah.
here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together
God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. We're picking back up in Psalm 138. We're going to talk tonight about verses 4 through 6. Now, last week ended in 4, but I want to pick it back up tonight because it plays into what I'm talking about in 5. And if, you don't, if I don't read 4, some of you might be like, what's he saying? So, I'm going to read Psalm 138, 4 through 6. It says, all the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Now I want to talk about six first, because I'm just going to say a little bit about it. I spend my whole time talking about verse 5. In verse 6, he says, Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly. We could also translate that he regards the humble. But you also could say, and yet he regard, But the proud he knows from afar. In other words, he keeps them at arm's distance. Okay? And so the reason why I want to start with four is all the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth. <clears throat> now these kings he's talking about is the kings he was talking about in the, in the previous messages. And he was talking about the pagan gods with a small g. That word is in Hebrew is Elohim. Small e, not capital. If you make it capital e, you're talking about God. Small e translated, and when you see Elohim with a capital E, you'd be understanding that they're talking about multiple. That'd be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. But when you use a small e, they're talking about pagan gods. But verse 4 tells us that when these pagan kings that worship these pagan gods hear the word of your mouth, that they're going to begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 5, yes, they shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. <clears throat> and what, to keep this in context, they're talking about the kings. That's who's singing. Yes, they, but the kings shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. There's coming a day when there's going to be a heavenly choir of kings that's going to be singing hallelujah, praise to the king of kings. And we'll all be calling him blessed. We'll all be bowing before him. And I can't wait for that day. Huh? That's going to be quite a, quite a time, isn't it? But in the in interim time, Next slide, please. 
It's according to the context of this spoken of the kings. The time will come when the king shall fall down before the king of kings, and all the people shall call Jesus blessed. A choir of kings shall praise and magnify the name of the Lord. That's going to be quite a thing to watch, isn't it? And so, as this happens, this hasn't happened yet, so this is, a, this is kind of prophetic. This is a future event yet to happen. And it says, the kings have not begun to sing. Let us sing. Let us make up for the royal silence. If others cannot praise God and speak well of his name and sing the praises of God, let the redeemed say so. That's what the next slide says. Come on. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. That's what he's done for us, isn't it? Huh? We were once lost in our sins, trapped in our sins, and he has delivered us. He has set us free. He has saved us, and he has redeemed us. That's a lot to get excited about. Now, I know we're supposed to be talking about the attitude of gratitude, but the verses that I got, it's about singing and praising the Lord. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So, <clears throat> I'm taking the text of what we're talking about and using it to reference ourselves. That's why the next slide I put all in caps. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord. It's talking about us, you and I. May our lives be a hallelujah praise unto the Lord. And when we come to God's house and we come to here, yeah, I look forward to it, you know, to gather with all of God's people. And to be able to say, let's worship the Lord together. I love what Brian had to say. We're going to sing and worship the Lord. Huh? That's powerful. That's what we're supposed to do. We should be coming to, we should look with an anticipation of doing that. I mean, sometimes too many people come to church like, coming like they've been sucking on pickles. <laughs> Seriously. That's not how we're supposed to be. Like, oh, oh, I have to, it's church time, we got to go. Huh? We're the redeemed. We belong to him. We, he's put a song in our hearts. Right. We have something to say. Amen. And so that's how it should be. Amen. I'm going to talk about Pastor Ray again. The last time I talked about him, I had a joke I told. Remember that joke? Huh? I'm not going to do that tonight. This is, this, this is good. This is good. Okay. <laughs> In staff meetings, and now I've seen them do it in elder meetings too, but in staff meetings, sometimes we'll be right in the middle of talking about business or whatever, and he'll break out and start singing a song. Huh? Have you ever seen him do that? Huh? Yeah, there's other, yeah. He just breaks out and starts singing. I get blessed by that. This last week at staff on Tuesday, he started singing Give Thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Now, I'm not a singer, that's why I'm just reading these, okay? Now, and now let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. That's how our lives should be. Just a break out in song. And I appreciate that, brother, that you have that in your heart. And not, too many, not all pastors have that. And I'm thankful that we have a man of God. We, I am thankful for a man that loves the Lord like that and has this, so that, that all of a sudden he just, boom, starts singing. Huh? It blesses me. So, bless, next slide please. If your pleasure is not in the ways of the Lord, then you cannot know much about those ways. And that's a sad thing. That's what I said. We shouldn't be coming to church looking like we're, we're been sucking on pickles and just limping along, huh? Amen. Yeah, we have problems. Everything's not perfect. We have things, but you know what? The Lord is our strength. The Lord is the answer. 
and all the craziness going on in our world today, we serve a sovereign God. Huh? That makes me, you get me shouting hallelujah here in a minute. That blesses me, and I comfort in that. Because if we just look at all the craziness going on, you can become overwhelmed. But we understand that God is in control of every last bit of it. There's none of it that's catching him off guard where he's wringing his hands and thinking, oh, no, I didn't know that was going to happen. He knows exactly what's going to happen. He knows what's going to come. He's in control of it all. So, next slide, please. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. That's how it should be, huh? Why? Because they will still be praising you. Huh? That's how it should be is when we come together. Look forward to being together and lifting up a voice into the Lord. And there's times when I just fill him in this room and say, oh, the Holy Spirit's in this place. And it's a, it's a refreshing time. And that's how it should be in our lives. That God has done these things. Blessed are the people in whose hearts are your ways. Their hearts will be full of joy. Huh. I think of a song, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Huh? Yeah? Nobody ever sings the high praises of God too often or too much. There's no such thing as praising God too much. Huh? How powerful and wonderful are his ways. Next slide, please. But those who wait, I love this verse. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Huh? Who's that? Those who wait upon the Lord. He shall renew our strength. If you're struggling, if there's things that seem so overwhelming, call upon his name and then wait upon him huh for he will come huh makes me think of, i'm going to talk about a lot of songs tonight okay huh rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin my double cure safe from wrath and make me pure. Huh? Wait upon them. In the cleft of that rock, as a place, a hiding place he has for us for a time of refreshing. Huh? That's what it means. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Have that place for me to hide in you, Lord. I, I need a rest. I need a breather. I need you, Lord, to step into my circumstances. You see, when we walk as God wants to have us to walk, we're made strong. So we're to walk in the power of his might. Next slide, please. The belt of faith girds a man or a woman with strength. Huh? There's strength. And you realize that when we find our strength from him, that belt of faith that girds us, and gives us strength. There's no other strength other, equal to that other than the omnipotent power of God. Huh. That's why we can wait and mount up like eagles. Why? Because he is our strength. <clears throat> we need to sing in the ways of the Lord. And when the ways get tough, and they can, and become passive suffering, sometimes become painful, keep singing. Keep singing. But pastor, it's hard to say. I know sometimes it's hard. It seems dark. It seems, but you know what? We belong to him. We belong to him. Next slide, please. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds, whether that's beds of rest or beds of affliction. 
Let us sing unto the Lord for why I belong to him. And there is nothing that's going to happen to me. Nothing is going to come upon me. There isn't anything that's going to happen to me because I'm in better hands than all state. I'm in the hands of Almighty God. Huh? And we can rejoice. So you see, if the Lord is with us, who can be against us? Hmm? Who can? No one. That's what I'm saying. If we have our faith and our, uh, we have that belt around us and we're girded with that faith, there, there's nothing stronger other than omnipotent God. Nothing. If the Lord is with you, what can stand against you? Nothing. How can we, how can we keep from sinking? Huh? You know what it says that when we come up against the gates of hell? Hmm? If the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. Now we always think about this, uh, the, uh, but those gates, they're a barrier that the enemy has put up to us. When we face that kind of barrier, we need to go on the offense. Huh? That gate is trying to stop us. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Those gates can be knocked down in Jesus' name. Those gates, we can overcome those things because we're overcomers in him. In him and in him alone. Next slide, please. We sing of the eternal ways of God in his purpose and decrees before time began. That's hard to a man put our arms around that one, isn't it? Isaiah 46.10 says this, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. And there's still some of them that's not yet done. But God declared the end from the beginning. He's in control of all this, church. We can rest in that. And from ancient times things that are not yet done. But will be. They're going to be in his timing. Well, sometimes it's a long wait. Think of Abraham and Sarah. Huh. Wait, 25 years for that child. He's 100 years old. She's, a, she's 90. She's tipping 90. Most of us would have given up long before that, huh? <laughs> Come on, huh? Come on. But he did it. He remained faithful. See, we can rest in that, that he is in control of all of this. We sing of God's actual ways when the time of fulfillment comes. Huh? The incarnate God descended into the manger? Huh? Away in the manger? No crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. Silent night, holy night. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. That's, that's what he wants us to be. Huh. That's powerful. Next slide, please. We sing of the same incarnate God opening of his heart to pour out the purchase price of our redemption. Huh? The old rugged cross? What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That should move us to shout, church. Huh? We will sing of the ways of God and the application of redemption to us. His people. How he convinced us of sin and led us, led us to the Savior. And I brought a book up here. Remember these? It's an old hymnal. And I was thinking as I'm writing this and putting this together, 
Again, I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it to you. If you want to talk about a joyful noise, that's what you get. And it says this. I think this song, God has used this in many a person's life, many a revival, many of a church altar call, many of a campaign put out there that has led tens of thousands, if not millions, to Jesus Christ. And it goes like this. Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. That's powerful, isn't it? Powerful. Just as I am. And if you're here tonight and you do not know the Lord Jesus, oh, I pray that today is the day of salvation and now is the accepted time that you would come to know him. Know him like we know him. He can transform you and change you like you never thought possible. Too many times we think, well, I'll quit doing this, I'll clean myself up, and I'll quit doing all these things. We'll be in hell first. You know that? Can't do it. But the call that he gives us, with all your brokenness, with all your sin, and all the, of the mess that you are, bring it to me just the way you are. Whoa. Huh? That's an exchange to be made. He became sin for us. that we could become the righteousness of God in him. We have no righteousness in our own. There's nothing righteous about us. I don't care how much we put on. We're not righteous. We want to think we are. The Bible makes very clear that our righteousness is as dirty rags, filthy rags. But he took my sins, and he paid them on Calvary's cross, and he became sin for me. And then he began to work on my life, and he called me unto himself. And thank God I had the wisdom enough to respond back and said, okay, Lord. Next thing I know, in the little church where we were at, I was always sitting on the back pew because my back in those days, I just wanted to play kissy face with Linda. She's my wife now. Back in those days, I was dating her. But at the age of 17, I under, there was a light that went on in me, and I let go of her hand. I think her jaw hit the floor. Because the next thing I knew, I was right here. <laughs> and my life was changed. It was altered forevermore. Amen. And oh, have I messed up along the way? Oh, you betcha I have. But he's always been there, and he began to, begin to speak and say, okay, Ron, let's talk about this. Huh? Just as I am. We will sing of the ways of God and the application of the, excuse me, we will sing, yeah, go, <laughs> we will sing of how he led us in the right way, helped us, comforted us, chastened us, directed us, and has wiped away our tears and our fears. That we may sing of the ways of the Lord. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says this, He who calls you is faithful and who also will do it. Huh? That's why he say he's the, he's the author and the finisher of my faith. Huh? He's the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He is faithful, even when times when I'm not faithful, but he always draws me back to himself. Why? Because I belong to him. Oh, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. I'm going to close yet. He is the perfecter of our faith, isn't he? Huh? He's changing me. He's taking the broken Ron and the young man that I, at the time, I'm not young anymore. Huh? I've been doing this for a while. Huh? 
From those days to now, 53 years has went by. That's a while. And you know what? He's still making changes in me. I'm still not there. I'm still not perfect. But he is. The perfect one is perfecting my faith, and he's growing me into his image. And it becomes less of me every day and more of him. Huh? Isn't that what John the Baptist says, that I might decrease, that he might increase? Huh? You see, if it's all about us, then, you know, if, if we make it all about us, we're really act, practicing idolatry. Huh? Because we're making it be about us. It's about him. Surrender us to him. Surrendering ourselves to him. I want to close with one verse from a song, and none of you are probably going to know. I didn't even know it. Most of these old ones, I've, there's a lot of them I do know. And it goes like this. And a new song's in my mouth. This was written in the 1800s. I'm going to think of a song written in the 1800s being a new song, but I guess it was back then. Huh? But I'm thankful. I don't know if Brian's in here and his bunch is in here or not, but I am thankful for the worship team that we have that takes, that comes and leads us before the throne of grace week after week and be able to worship him and bring praise and glory to him. But I want to close with this, and then I'm going to turn it back to Pastor Greg. It says, in a new song, is in my mouth to long love music set. Glory to you for all the grace I have not tasted yet. Hallelujah. Pastor Greg. I got to tell you, I loved that message. And I love our worship time today. I appreciate our worship team and their commitment to lead us in worship. And, and then just that message resonated with me. And, and maybe it did with you as well. Maybe it resonated with you. Maybe you're not a believer and, and you're just trying to understand what it means to, to have a relationship with God. And so, man, we would love to help you do that. We would love to come alongside with you, walk with you, and, and help you understand this aspect of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. If that's you, reach out to me, greg at discoverypointaz.com. I would love to begin a conversation with you around that. Also, uh, let me just mention a few things that you want, want you to be aware of is, is during this, this season, during, even during uh, this pandemic, we always wanna be missional focused. We're always involved in opportunities to bless others and to serve others. Right now at Discovery Point, Angel Tree is that primary uh, missional opportunity for all of us. And so Angel Tree is this, it, it's a ministry of prison fellowship and it allows us to bless the children uh, of those uh, adults who are incarcerated. So, so we're partnering. And, and this year what we're doing is we're, we're collecting $20 gift cards. So you can pick up a gift card to Target or to Walmart. And, and, and you can bless a child with that gift card. But you will need to bring that here to Discovery Point. But there's also another way that you can be a part of this and not even have to go to Target, not even have to go to Walmart, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through that. So if you have the Discovery Point app, I have our church app up here. It's in, the, it's in the app store, both on Apple and Android. You can actually open our app after you've downloaded, and there you can just click on the Give icon. So when you click on the Give icon, it's gonna open up a menu, and you simply hit Continue. As you hit that, it brings you to a a, a drop-down menu, a giving platform menu. So from this giving platform, you just see it says my donation. You just click that arrow, scroll down, and you will see Christmas Angel Tree, and there you can enter your amount. Again, for 20 bucks, uh, you can bless a child. So as you give, our team will actually go purchase those gift cards and make sure they are mailed directly to a child uh, who, who could just use a little hope. And by the way, Angel Tree is more than us just giving out gift cards to children. It's kind of a holistic approach to serving and blessing children during the holiday season. So a gift card is one thing they get. They also are receiving other uh, uh, resources of spiritual value in their life. And so it's all a part of a, of a larger 
uh, a larger gift. And so join with us in this. We're, our goal is 85 kids. We want to bless 85 kids this year. And to do that, we're going to need you to help us. Also, one other opportunity is our San Luis mission trip is coming up this Friday and Saturday. So if you've been thinking about it or you're looking for an opportunity over the holiday weekend to get out and to serve, San Luis might just be the trip for you. For more information, email Kaylee, Kaylee at discoverypointaz.com. She will get you connected to the team leader, and at least you can find out more information about that trip. Well, we want to pray for you, so let us know. Use the app, use the website, uh, use those social media platforms, and send us your prayer request. Also, if you're supporting this ministry, we want to say thank you for your continued support. We know that these are challenging times financially, and so if you are supporting us, we want to say thank you. If you haven't had the chance to support us and you would like to, if God leads you to do that, we appreciate your partnership in this ministry. So again, go to our website, use the app. Those are areas where you can actually give to the ministry electronically. It's a convenient way to give, and we would appreciate your support. Well, we hope you have a great week. Thanksgiving's coming up uh, this Thursday. Have a great time together, right? Put a song in your heart. Understand the ways of the Lord moving in to this Thanksgiving season. We love you. God bless you. We're praying for you. Have a great Thanksgiving.